Morning YouTubers, uh, yeah, so we're back after main event. So, uh, as you can see, that's the tire we damaged on the, uh, on the bank holiday Monday. Already got the spare one out, ready to go. Um, so we're gonna just finish unloading everything else out of the trailer. Uh, and then we're gonna take those two tires and they're gonna swap them over. I use county tires in, in Calm. They're the people who look after my tires. Now I have got a problem with one of the back ones. So I'm gonna have a look at that before I go because otherwise I might be able to take so I've actually got some more monster truck tires. So, so I've got some more spare ones down there. Also, I've got some more spare ones stacked up over here. So I've got plenty of spares. But yeah, I just want to see how bad that I've got a little tear in the side wall of it. I don't think it's actually too deep. So I think I might be able to just um, put some compound in that and just glue that back together. Because I only think it's just like a color, couple of millimeters deep when the side walls on these monster truck tires are over an inch thick. So I think we should be good on that. So I'm just gonna check it out quickly and get Swamp Thing out of the trailer. Uh, and yeah, and then we can load these up. I'm gonna actually, just, I've got a car transporter, so I'm gonna take them up on my car, car transporter trailer. It's a lot easier than taking this massive, massive monster truck trailer all the way up to county, county tires. Look who it is. All right, so Shadow's in. Tires are on, look how big that split is in this one here. Look at that, look at that hole. If it wasn't so near the edge, I think it might be repairable. I'm gonna let them have a look at it anyway, because I use another company who, who specialise in fixing big tires like this. I've had really big punctures fix them before, but not quite as close to where, where it actually mounts on the bead. So yeah, so but I'm gonna drop it off of them anyway, because they these are really, really expensive tires. So if it cost me 300 pounds to get that repair fixed, I'll, I'll get it done. Um, but yes, yeah, so we got a, another one here. This is one of my really good spare tires. I've got a, another really good two. I've actually got probably seven spare tires dotted around the farm. So yeah, so let's go and drop this off at County Tires. And they're gonna give me a ring because they're not actually gonna do it while I wait because they're really quite busy today, but they really helped me out. So they said if I can come and drop them up to them, because they have got a van, they will come out to you. Just so they're just really busy. And I said, look, oh, oh, I can drop them up to you. I can leave them, leave you, leave them with them for a couple of days, and then I can just go and pick it up afterwards. Okay, so this is the part of my workshop where I do all the fiberglassing and painting. And um, we're going to be doing a, a lot of fiberglassing later on in the week. Um, but at the weekend, I damaged the tailgate on my monster truck and the bedside. Now the bedside, not a problem. I've already got it painted, so that's all ready to go on. And I thought I had some more tailgates because I do smash up a lot of tailgates. So. Look, there's another one there. There's one on the back of the truck. So I do that. They do get smashed up a lot And I thought I had some more of them painted um, But I haven't so we got one here that I've made earlier um, So yeah, so we got to paint this one all today So we got to get the primer the base coat and the lacquer on all today because we've got lots of fiberglassing to do tomorrow So yeah, so if you can sit the back there That's all the chop strand mat. So that's um, there's two lots behind there There's a, a, a 200 GSM, which is the first coat you put on and a 600 and of course then we've got all the resins and stuff as well so let's get on with painting this because we've got lots to do this week lots and lots the second coat of etch primer just flashing off now so you can actually see when it's drying because it actually changes color so the darker bit in the middle there that is actually still like wet and then when it's dry it actually goes lighter so the next thing we're going to put on it is the filler primer because that's an etch primer so it doesn't give a lot of build on this one um, so the next one we're going to put on is the filler primer now it's a slightly different color it's still gray but it's a very it's a lighter gray so when you're sanding because we're going to actually sand down the next level of primer so if we actually go through the primer and we see, see start seeing the darker gray we know to stop because we're actually going to get, be going quite close to the fiberglass and we want to keep a nice layer of adhesion underneath the paint
Okay, so I've just put the first coat of green on. So this is metallic green. Um, isn't a Pacific color, I've actually made it up myself. So you can't actually buy this color. It's, it's something I made up. So I, I, used, I used to be a paint sprayer, believe it or not. And that's my trade. Um, but the problem with this color I made, um, it's very translucent. So you have to put so many layers of it on. So, and also, if you put it on too heavy, it, um, it goes really stripy and, re and really blotchy. So it's loads and loads of very light layers and just keep building it up, building it up. So it's normally about eight layers to get it to the dark green that you see it on the truck. Okay, so we actually put seven on this time, but the second, the seventh one was a, a double cross. So we went all the way across one way and then crossed it back the other way with a dusting coat. So yeah, so now all we have to do is let it flash off and then we can put on the lacquer. Now, I'm not gonna video why I put the lacquer on. The main reason that is because what all the things we're doing at the moment, um, the paint stays fairly dry. Now the lacquer will stay wet in the air and I don't want to get it on the camera because um, it is my phone um, so yeah um, so I'll video it after it to show you what I've done but it's gonna have um, I'm probably only gonna put two coats of lacquer on um, we're not going for a, a mental finish on the tailgate because it's a monster truck and we do smash them up a lot and the tailgate is the bit I smash the most so I haven't gone absolutely mad so there, there is imperfections in the in the in the paint um, and in the in, actually in the fiberglass so there's, there's very very small little pinholes in there but you can never see it when you're actually at a show because you, the, most people only get roughly 20 feet from the monster truck when it's parked up near a fence. No one ever gets up really, really close to it. So the rest of my monster truck's in fa fairly good, but I never go mental on the tailgate. Because when we do wheelies, we're always smashing them up. And I probably do normally, uh, normally I normally do about four to five tailgates a year. Okay, so it's there it is, it's all finished. So from start to finish, from bare fiberglass to Etch priming through the filler primer, um, seven coats of base coat and two coats of lacquer. It's about about three and a half hours to get it to finish. So we're gonna leave it overnight now um, and then it'll be fully dry in the morning. You can't bake fiberglass off like, like a, a normal uh, vehicle. Um, it, it gets, it distorts, so we can't get it too warm. So we're gonna leave it overnight and then that should be good um, for tomorrow. tomorrow. So, but tomorrow I've got my son, I think, is coming down with me and we're going to be doing fiberglass in. But he's never done it before. So we're gonna, I'm going to teach him um, and you might be able to learn something too. Um, so yeah, so that's it for today. Good night. Okay, so we're up in the office at the moment. My office is a right mess at the moment because we're doing fiberglass in. So I need to get the moulds down. So the moulds are actually normally stored on the landing out here. The, so and they're right at the very back so all the body spare body panels that i have are in front of them so yeah so i've had to move all of these parts the bonnet that's the one we painted yesterday so then we just bought that out the spray booth um to let it dry up here so yeah it's nice and shiny so that'll do um yeah some more panels down here on the floor yes it's a right mess but yeah i can stack them all back later so i'm just making myself a cup of tomato soup um just a bit, bit thirsty um, don't want something to eat yet um, but yeah so I've taken so the panels I've taken downstairs to do so we've got a left hand bedside a tailgate and I'm going to make a bonnet 
Um, so yeah, so those are the parts we're gonna make today. So I should be able to do all of them in one go. Um, the worst one to make, believe it or not, is the bonnet. It is the biggest, but it's got the most returns. So we have to do that slightly different to the other ones, because the other ones we can do straight off in 600 GSM, um, which is how thick, if you remember like paper, you can get different weight, grades of paper for your printer. Um, so if you have like a quite good quality printer paper, you'd love it like 80 GSM. I think that's, I think that's almost card. But um, yeah, so yes, yeah, so the, the higher the number, the th how thick the fiberglass is. So I can show you what the fiberglass looks like in a minute, because I use two different sorts. I use 600 GSM and 200. Now for the front of the bonnet, we do that in 200 because it's got more curves, more awkward bits to get the fiberglass to get into because we don't want them to have any air gaps in the fiberglass. Um, but yeah, so they're down in the spray booth um, and I'll show you what we have to do to the moulds before we actually start putting on some gel coat. This is the, the bedside mould. Now the moulds are the reverse of what you see on the truck. So when we start, we actually put a gel coat onto this um, and that is the outside of the panel you see. So all the fiberglass goes on the inside of that. So you have a nice smooth outside, the bit you see, and the inside, what you don't see, that's slightly rougher and you can see all the, all the glass fiber strands. So behind me there, that's the bonnet or if you're in America, the hood, you're gonna, you're gonna laugh, you're gonna keep laughing in America, me saying bonnet because a bonnet is something you stick on your head. All my, all my friends in America keeps telling me that a bonnet goes on your head, it doesn't go on the front of a vehicle. So that's the, that's the bonnet. Um, and it has the wings all in done. So all my panels, I've already pre-cut all the wheel arches so I don't have to worry about or oh, where is the wheel arch. All, in my molds, all the panels are already cut out. So all I, there's no waste. Yeah, so that is where the big wheel arch goes. And over here, That there is the mould for the tailgate. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a nice easy one. They're, they're really quick to make. It's a good job because we, make it, we smash up a lot of them. So yeah, so what we have to do now is we have to prepare these. So I've just blown the dust off them with an airline. And so next we actually have to make sure when we put the gel coat on, it doesn't stick. So the next thing we have to do, we have to put a, a, a release compound on there. It's actually like a, a really strong wax. So we put two layers of wax on there, buff it off, and then when you feel it with your, with your hands, you can feel it's, it's dead smooth. At the moment, it's, you can still feel the little bits of dust on there. So let's get these cleaned up, and then we can get on with getting these things made in fiberglass. Oh, I was gonna show you the fiberglass, wasn't I? Yeah, so fiberglass, so I've got chop strand mat. If I, let's get a piece here. So this is the chop strand mat. So this one is 600 GSM. So that's how thick it is on, on edge. Um, if I pull it over here, um, you can actually pull it apart. So you can see it's made up of loads and loads of different bits of glass. But it's, it, it's not sharp. Um, they're, they're, it's actually made of recycled material, this is. So this is what your, your bottles and stuff get made into, old pieces, old um, um, windows. It's all recycled, this stuff, so yeah, so it's quite environmentally friendly, really. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the glass fiber. Now this is chop strand mat. You can get weaved mat, which is actually stronger, but it's more awkward to work with. But you can, you can get the same results just with this. Um, there's different ways of doing it. You can actually put filler compounds in there, so it lo looks like a bit like aerated foam. Um, if you're doing heavy stuff that you're going to walk on, but we're, all we're interested in is making the monster truck look like a monster truck, because if not, it just looks like a climbing frame with big wheels on it. Um, so yeah, so let's get these um, all prepped up and then we can start mixing up some gel coat and getting it covered. Okay, so that's the release agent I use. Uh, this is the the tailgate. So all we do now is just get get the, just keep, I actually keep this rag in the pot. So we're just going to do loads and loads and loads and loads of circles now. Make this, get it all covered in wax, then leave it, actually it hardens, and then we have to buff it off with a microfiber towel. So we actually go over the complete panels twice. So we make sure that when we put the gel coat on, we don't get it sticking. And the thing you have to be careful of is like little joints down like in here. It's quite easy to leave the um, 
to leave this wax actually in the groove and then it, it starts to wrinkle so a bit more on go around and round and round it's just best if you do little circles and you don't actually miss anything so we've got to go all over this panel twice and we've got to do then we've got to do that's the bedside and the bonnet so we've got to go over these twice and then buff them off again and then we're ready for some gel coat so here we are so i'm just about to start mixing up um, the gel coat so the gel coat is what gives this panel its finish so the gel coat i use is actually a clear one but i've actually put some pigment in it to actually change the color of it so this one's going to be a black one so we're going to end up with a black looking panel um, i also put the pigment in the fiberglass as well so it actually colors the fiberglass because the fiberglass is absolutely completely clear um, so yeah so at the moment i'm just mixing this all together and the idea of that is it just you can actually see when you've put it on there you can actually buy gel coat already colored you can buy it in white or gray um i just I'd like to use a black one um it looks better but when you actually have the panel finished because with the monster truck you can actually see the back of it so i just liked it all to be completely black so then if you've ever done filler in on a car like putting some body filler in you know you have to put a hardener in it so this is exactly the same so on this we use a catalyst uh, the catalyst is a basically a liquid hardener for for this gel coat i have to use three percent so this bucket's a, a, a three litre bucket so that works out at 90 millilitres of hardener to put it in it doesn't seem a lot um if you don't put enough in it doesn't really go off it will it will go off eventually but it takes forever if you put too much in it goes off before you actually get it on the panel so it's a bit just like filler if you put too much hardener in filler it goes it goes off really rock hard so as you can see that's all mixed in now next thing i have to do is just mix in the hardener i don't know actually how i'm going to film the next bit because the next bit i'll probably show you after it's done um basically all you all you're doing is just getting a brush and just brushing the whole panel over trying to get a nice fairly even but it doesn't matter if you get a run because the run will be on the inside because what you actually see is the outside so yeah you would actually see it in a minute if i leave some runs in it and you can actually see it all the only problem when you get leave big runs in there is it harder when you're doing the fiberglassing because you have to try and go over the runs in the paint so let me get the hardener in start putting it on the panel and i'll probably film it after i've put it on um i can't i can't see how i'm going to do this with one hand and and hold the pot and put the put everything on so let's get on with this and let's show you what happens at the end okay so that's the panels all done with gel coat so see what i mean about it. if you do get a run it doesn't really matter as long as you haven't got some huge huge big bits in there so all we're doing is trying to just brush on put a nice even coat over all of it so on these you just do up to where the edge is so you don't want to go over the edge because that's actually where the the bit where you cut off so any bits where you want to um, have as the panel you put the gel coat on any bits that you don't want to be part of the panel so we don't want this return on the panel because the tailgate finishes here at the top so we just paint the black up and then we know where the cut line is in so that just makes it easier and the same same on this edge here so it's a little bit hard to see on this one because this one's already black so we've only put the gel coat around the edge and we haven't gone on the down surface because the down surface is the return to give the panel some really good strength so it doesn't distort so i'm gonna have to leave these now for about an hour um so they tack off so the idea is the surface that hasn't got any air on it that actually goes rock hard so this surface that has got air on it it will still still stay tacky that's hard to say still stay tacky yeah yeah so yeah so when we put the fiberglass on it it takes away the oxygen and that's what makes it go off and that's what makes it hard and also because it's slightly tacky when you put the fiberglass on it it actually melts into it a little bit and then you got really good adhesion then so you don't get the gel coat flaking off sometimes you see um gel coat cracks and that's because it's been either left too long or when they've put the fiberglass on they've actually haven't got the fiberglass wet enough so then it's got a, a gap in between and that's what makes it crack so let's talk about the tools you need so there isn't too many tools you need to do fiberglassing 
So you need a, a selection of rollers, um, the rollers like this. Um, you use this when you put the, the resin on and then you've got what well, basically you're trying to roll out the air. So this is actually getting the resin all the way through the glass fiber, which is your matting. Yeah, so you put, so you get it nice and wet and then just keep rolling it. And that's also how you get it to go around the corners. Now you do different size rollers. So like this one here, that's for getting into tight corners. If you're doing very large panels, use a, a lot wider one. And um, the only problem with a, with a really wide one, you can't actually press that hard on it and squeeze it all the way through. So if you've got a, a panel that's very large and very thin and it will distort, you probably best not use the big one. Um, but it all depends, um, just the pot, use the same pot as we used for when we did the gel coat, just clean that one out. Um, brushes, yeah, and of course, gloves on your hands, um, goggles on your eyes and protective clothes because it does make a bit of a mess. Um, it's also quite smelly. Um, so if you're se sensitive to it, you might need a respirator. So there it is, that's that one side panel done. So it's had two coats of 600 GSM all over. And in the places where the bodywork mounts, it's actually four layers thick. So we actually put those extra pieces in there and it's got had a, an extra piece all the way along the top because that's the bit where it's mostly supported. So we try and keep it as light as we can, but as strong as we can. So we, that's why we do those reinforcements in those certain areas. Okay, so that's all the three panels done. So we've done the bedside, the tailgate, and you're gonna laugh again, all, your friend, all my friends in America, the bonnet, the bonnet's done. So as you can see, this one is the one I've done last. So that one still looks wet. So this is the one I've actually done um, first. And you can see that one is already matted off. So that one's already starting to dry. Um, yeah, depending on how much hardening you put it, you can actually get it to go off almost straight away. Um, but we're gonna have to leave these overnight to, to get these fully hard. Um, and we can see if we can pop them out in the morning. If they're still a little bit soft, we'd leave them in there a little bit longer. The longer you leave them the, and the harder it is, the easier it is to get them out there um, because you actually have to try and pop them because they're actually quite stuck at the moment, especially the bonnet where it's got all the returns. You actually have to like, just force it out of there. Now, sometimes on fiberglass, and like if I'm doing my bumper, my bumper actually goes round, so it's actually a three-piece mold, and also the cab's a four-piece mold, so it all bolts together, because it physically, you wouldn't be able to pull it out because of the way it's got returns and stuff on it. But luckily with a bonnet, we can actually just force it out, and that comes out. Bed size are nice and easy, and of course, the, tail, the tailgate, that was the easiest one of all. So if, you, if you're learning to do fiberglass, um, the main, the main thing is just take your time and don't go too quick with it. Um, it's quite easy to, to, to rush it and actually make it worse for yourself. So yeah, it's just a lot of practice. Um, if you can do fiberglass repairs on a, a vehicle, if you've ever done that, if you actually got the moulds, it's a lot, lot easier. So most of the time on the monster truck, when I smash the back of it up, it's easier just to make a new one than it is to try and fix the old one. Now and again, I will try and fix the old ones because um, it just saves a lot of material. But I'll show you another day how you can actually cheat. If you've got the moulds, you can just cut the thing in half and then just do half of it. So I can show you that another time. Morning, so there's the panels that we made yesterday. So there's a, the tailgate up there, side panel and the bonnet. Um, so, yeah, so let's just pop, pop this one out. Um, I've got lots more to do today, so we've got to get the truck ready. So we're getting ready to go to American Speed Fest for Sunday. Um, yes, we've got to do a uh, little bit of work on the truck. We've got to do all the normal servicing. Got to redo the shock absorbers. Um, yeah, we've got lots to do. So let's just pop this out of the pan, uh, pop this out of the mold, and show you what it looks like.
Okay, so it's all out the mold now. So as you can see on the edge here, that is where we cut, is the cut line. We cut this, I've got a, an angle grinder with a diamond cutting blade on it, uh, with a diamond, sorry, diamond encrusted blade. So it's really good for cutting this. You, you could use a normal crack cutting disc, but they wear out really quick. Um, so yeah, the diamond, diamond cutting ones, really, really good, last for absolutely ages. So yeah, so we just need to cut around the edge of it. Um, I won't do that today. Oh, we've got, got still got lots on. Yeah, so that one's all, all done. So that's a nice one, spare one to put up on the up on the rack with the rest of the stuff. Uh, so yeah, so we'll just pop the rest of them out. Well, I'm not going to film that. It's the same. Just it's the same as this one. You just got to go around, crack all the edges. Um, sometimes I've got um, some bits of polycarbonate on longer bits where it get, you get a lot more stiction on it. So the bigger the gap on the panel, so see that that panel there is quite small. If you've got like the bonnet, it actually does stick quite a lot. So I've got bits of polycarbonate, we can just push down there and just ease it out. Um, the tailgate is the easiest one to get out. There's no hardly any returns on it at all. So that one, just you just wiggle it and it all pops out. So yeah, so let's get on with the rest, doing the rest of the stuff on the monster truck. Um, um, yeah, we've got a busy day on today. All right, quick sit rep. I'm being really busy today, so I'm not doing all the filming. So just finished changing the oil. So of course, use Lucas oil, only the best for the monster truck. Um, just finished doing the suspension on the front. This is what I was on about last time. So now it's on these little wheels. We can adjust it on the jack. So it's the same one. We don't have to have two different ones for when it's on different heights. So we just finished resetting the suspension on the front. So yeah, we use exactly the same what we did at Santa Pod in our last vlog video. Just resetting it all up. Um, next thing we're doing is we're changing the new, putting a new tailgate on the tailgate we painted. That's going on. And then we're gonna match up a new bedside to repair the one that's got the rip down it. So if we go around that side, I'll show you what we're gonna do next. So at the moment we've got the tailgate, which is riveted together. Also we've got the tailgate, uh, sorry, the side panel that's got the rip in it. So we're gonna take all this off in a minute and then get it all ready because Kelvin from VK Graphics, one of my great sponsors, they're coming over this afternoon to put the new vinyl back on it to, put the, to match it up with the front. So yeah, so let's get on with this bit and get oh, just let gets going we've got so much to do today so here we all are back together no horrible split in the tailgate anymore because that's the new one we painted the other day bedside already had painted uh, yeah really nice fit joins joins in really nice so all the body lines line up so vk graphics are going to come down in a minute and they're going to put the the rest of the swamp thing back on it um yeah just got to carry on doing all the other checks on the monster truck now before we're ready to load up Okay, so the tire's back. So this is the, the new tire we've just put on Swamp Thing because that other one was ripped. So that one's back. <sighs> so it's all go today, all go here at the workshop. Okay, so Kelvin's been down, done the magic. Swamp Thing is back, Swamp Thing is back. That looks awesome. Thank you, VK Graphics. Okay, so I've finished all the checks on the monster trucks. Did find one problem with it. So down here, I didn't video when I fixed it, so I just wanted to get it done. So down here, you got this big bolt in there and that bolt holds the prop shaft guard on the idea of the prop shaft guard if the prop shaft breaks it keeps the prop shaft inside and doesn't fly it let it fly about now basically what happened the thread had gone in the, in the in the bracket in all these brackets around here so the thread had gone in it so i've got the plasma cutter out i cut the the nut or was welded in there cut that out welded a new one back in it and then assembled it all back up i didn't video it because i just wanted to get it done and out of the way so that's it, the end of the vlog for this week. I hope you enjoyed the fiberglassing. Um, if you wanted to put any comments down, I always read all your comments. If you've got any questions about how you do stuff with fiberglass, just drop it in the comments below. Um, yes, and, and don't forget to subscribe. So that's it for this week. Um, we're going to load up now, and we're off to America Speed Fest tomorrow.